Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at Productivity 1000 series PLC timer instructions. And last time we looked at the some of the coil instructions and we looked at the flasher which flashed for so many so much time on and so much time off. And we also looked like the, uh, looked at the time coil under coils which told us how much time until that coil um, uh, timed out. So today we're going to, under timers and counters, we'll look at the simple timer and the regular timer. So if I look up on my screen here, I am actually connected to my Productivity 1000 controller. And we have a Ethernet connection here and we have our USB connection right here. We're currently connected through our Ethernet connection uh, simply because you can see that down here at the bottom of my screen here. So here's my instruction up here and the first thing I have is my switch number one and it actually goes to my simple timer. And if I double click on my simple timer, what we'll see is with all timers we look at timing charts and this is the timing chart for on delay timer. So what you'll see is that when we have our input or our switch turns on it provides power to our controller or our, to our simple timer it will actually time for preset value which is the time that we set and it will turn on the output then the output will turn off once my input then turns off so that is my timing chart my on delay timing chart and so this is um, using uh, a structure which means basically if I put one name in here, it automatically associates my uh, preset, my current and my done bits incorporated within that same structure. So hit OK. And what we'll do is we'll turn on that switch. And what will happen is we'll actually delay for 10 seconds here because this is a 0 0.01 second delay. Once I get to 10 seconds, my done bit will turn on, which it does, and my output then turns on. So, and you'll see my output right here, output number one. So that seems to be working great. Now, I said before that once we set up a structure, you'll see that. So that's simple timer one. If I look at my tag database, um, you'll see my simple timer one when I set up my structure. And there's my uh, present value, my current, and my done bit. And what I did was in that tag database, I made my preset retentive with the initial value of uh, 1000, which represents my 10 seconds. So that's how we read the simple timer. Now, if we go to simple timer 2, again, we're going to have a preset value of 10 seconds, and it will be memory retentive. So let's just close that down and what we'll do is take a look at my second example here of my simple timer. And in this case here, what we have is a off delay time now. So with the off delay time, as soon as the input uh, instruction um, to the rung is on or true, the output actually comes on and it will remain on until I turn off the run condition, which will then start a timer. That timer then will then time out for that duration. In our case here, it's going to be 10 seconds and it will turn off. So that's exactly how it's going to work. And again, we, again, what we showed with the tag database, we use simple timer number two as a structure, which then sets up my preset, my current and my done bit. So we'll just hit OK. So, and let's watch this uh, actually function. So as soon as I turn switch number two on, my output should turn on. And sure enough, that's exactly what it did. So there's my output number two here. So when I turn that switch off, what we'll see is that now my counting, or my timing is actually timing down until I get to the 10 seconds, which then turns off that output, which is exactly what it did here. And the third one we have is our regular timer instruction. Now our timer instruction, what it will do is it actually has a uptime, a downtime, 
and a reset time. So if we actually look at the instruction itself, we can see that we have, um, we've used structure again, timer number one, and we have a, a preset value, we have a reset to value, we have a current value, current value, which is what the current, uh, the system is right now. We have the uh, equal to, we have the less than and greater than uh, Boolean bits, which tells us where that counter or that timer is currently. So let's hit OK. And let's just take a look uh, at our program here. And what we'll do is switch number three, we'll turn it on, we'll count up. Currently right now, we're set for 20 seconds because we have a time base rate of seconds. And that time base rate, by the way, was right here. We can select hours, minutes, seconds, or milliseconds. We'll just hit OK. Um, we have a, uh, so our preset value is 20 seconds. We have a current value of 11 seconds. If we have the equal to is if the present value equals the current value, this will be on. If the present value is l uh, less than or the, um, the present value or preset value, then the less than flag goes on. If the current value is greater than the preset value, then the greater than flag turns on. So currently right now I have um, I have the less than flag turned on right now and so output number four is currently on right now which we can see here. So if we were to monitor this what we'll do is turn on switch number three. When switch number three turns on you can actually see now that we're counting up and we'll turn switch number three off as soon as it hits 20. So now we have equal to, we'll turn switch number three on again. And you'll see now that it's greater than we have output number five, then we'll come on, which is right here. So we'll turn switch number three off, switch number four will turn on. And what you'll now see is that the uh, timer is now timing down. So once we hit the uh, equal to flag, then the equal f flag will come on. There we go. And then our less than flag then comes on once we go underneath or the current value is less than the preset value. So let's just turn that one off again. We can turn it back up again or we can hit F5 which is our switch drive, which is our reset button. And the reset button takes us back to our, our reset value, which is zero. So it zeroes out our current value. So we'll turn that one back off. And we're back to the start again. So all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. And if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.